Hey guys, welcome to the tutorial. So this is a little snippet from Nuke 505. It's just a sketching integration ideas. Um, so Nuke 505 is a class, it's not out yet. It's gonna be a 15 hour course on keying D-spill and plate integration. So pretty much the longest course I think I've released uh, up to this point. But uh, so yeah, uh, quite in depth, but this is just a, I think a 16 minute clip from that class and just shows my thought process when I'm starting some integration. Um, so this is not a final integration or a final comp kind of thing. It's still kind of in that rough starting form, um, but it just shows you kind of a, a, a technique and sort of a more of a mental process to just kind of sketch over a, a shot when you're starting it. So I also have some uh, other other announcements coming in the next five to seven weeks. Uh, so four other announcements that I really haven't talked about yet, and I think this will be really really useful for compositors. So. Uh, that will be coming, so make sure you're signed up on YouTube, on subscribe, or the uh, email list there. And uh, yeah, we're going to talk about uh, integration now. So how do we get this character to sit in on the background? And so we'll start to get into a little bit of color correction, um, some uh, matching the blacks. Um, also, just some things that we can do with the highlights to make them blend together. Their midtones are kind of already in the same realm. But uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot we can do here to make these kind of feel together. So I'm gonna point a couple of them out so we know the direction that we're going in and uh, then we'll tackle them uh, one at a time. So first I'm gonna start with just a roto paint and kind of circle some, some things that I'm seeing. So first things first, uh, this thing I mentioned earlier where how it's kind of lifted so we see that he's uh, a bit brighter. So if we're looking at the tones of this black versus this black, uh, there's a huge difference there. And which makes no sense because uh, not only is this further away, but um, it just doesn't make any sense that he would be that lifted. So there's a couple ways you can do uh, or fix this, um, but I wanna show just a couple other things that we will tackle as well. So uh, we can, look at this thing, maybe this could be brighter. Um, if we're looking at, get a bigger brush here. So if we see uh, this building, you know, we're seeing how bright he is on this side. And we don't know if it's this building that's lighting him up. It's probably not. This seems, the light here seems more like it's coming from somewhere off the camera uh, and kind of lighting him. But it would be kind of nice to like light him up a little bit more maybe, and uh, just to make it feel like this and this feel a little bit more connected. Uh, we can also play around with kind of doing a, a, a sort of a brightening on this side and then fading it off in this direction. So it kind of feels like this building is actually giving him some light. So we could kind of fake a little bit of light onto him. So we could kind of uh, put a little bit more like this and then fading it off very slightly. And this might be very subtle uh, these are just things I'm thinking. I'm gonna play around with them. Maybe we go with them, maybe we don't. But these are just things I'm trying to feel out when I'm looking at this picture. Uh, so again, the black thing, uh, the lifted blacks, we can see the same problem here. And we can also see, um, we have some brighter things in the background as well. So we might get just a little bit of light wrap on his on the edges here. So for integration, we can we can start thinking about things like that. Uh, so other things we can do that a lot of composers starting out maybe they don't think of, uh, these are kind of maybe the more obvious things like the blacks is, uh, sort of the more obvious thing. Let me, uh, disable that Put a frame hold on this frame, which is frame 49. So that's our first uh, style frame, I guess, or just kind of guiding roto paint. So I like to do this when I'm planning out what I'm gonna do just to visualize and get my thoughts on paper in, in essence. So another thing we can do is if we look at this, I think this little armpit thing looks a little bit unnatural. So if we look at this, this thing, we have this like orange, I don't know, highlight that's kind of catching. And if we look on different frames, uh, it's coming from the real footage, but that's something we might wanna just neutralize. So we don't really wanna see that because it's, it's not, it's causing a very big value contrast conflict between here and, and the background. 
So that's things we want to watch out for is uh, these type of these type of things, especially in a composite. And even if it would happen in real life, uh, just for film's sake, it's just not pleasant on, on the image and your eye will go straight towards a very bright thing against a very dark thing. So there's other things we can do as well. Like for example, even if we were to darken this character here, we still might get a little bit of value conflict here. So actually, this is what I was talking about. Like it's not as obvious to maybe starting compositors, but uh, what you can do is sort of, uh, maybe you could very slightly brighten this water, uh, you know, so it's not so black and just sort of bring a little bit of value into here so that you're not getting such a conflict on his silhouette. Unless you're really trying to draw your eye to his silhouette, but probably more so uh, on this scene is your tension is wanting to be on the city and his face. So maybe not just this dark, empty area of the composite. So where you have very bright and dark against each other, uh, if you, if, unless you're trying to draw attention to it, uh, it's, it's best to consider that maybe we could uh, bring those things together a little bit closer. So that's one thing to think about. There's another th trick, uh, not a trick, but so I'll just frame hold this on frame 42. And I'll save these off the side. So if you guys ever, if you want to look at them, uh, I'll just say concept integration ideas. I'm not sure it will help because we'll be fully integrated and you have the video anyway. So, um, so other things we can do uh, in terms of integration and just bringing a little bit more life into this image is so we can probably boost these highlights a little bit um, on this building. It would just be nice to see see something that doesn't look so flat. We have areas back here that look really popped out and then this building looks flat. So that's something that's really bothering me in terms of that uh, look. So we could kind of pop some of those highlights because if you look at the highlights on our guy, you know, some of them are pretty bright, but then everything in the back seems a little bit flat. So if you look at these highlights, how is it that uh, street lights are very flat and then just the light on our character is brighter? So that's something that that's not matching. You know, we need to, we need to bring these into some realm. So either bringing down the, the lights on this guy, which wouldn't really make a lot of sense. It actually makes sense to ping some of these highlights to b bring everything into the same dynamic range, uh, basically. So that's something we'll, 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 we'll address. Um, another thing that... So let me frame hold that one as well, and we'll just keep that. Uh, we could probably desaturate this a little bit as well. Uh, we'll go through and look at that. But where's the other thing that I was seeing? I was seeing, so sometimes uh, something that happens, I'm going to play through and let it cache. Here we go. This is actually a good frame for it. Uh, Sometimes there are unfortunate coincidences with edges that actually make it look like a mistake in your key. And this is actually a great example of this. We have these lights that are in the shape of um, sort of, uh, let me just draw it. So we have these lights and this happens uh, quite frequently. And then you might get uh, a note from a supervisor saying, hey, there's an edge on your key or something like that, but it's actually not the key. Sometimes you just get an unfortunate coincidence of edges creating conflict. So you have this edge here and you have the shoulder, which happens to line up almost on the same edge. So this is making it almost look like we have a black halo around our key. So if you look at it, it kind of looks like that this, there's a dark edge going around our key. And that's actually not the case. There's, if we put this over like a gray background and you know, we merge this over. We don't have that problem. So th those things can definitely happen. And that's something that I would want to fix. Uh, I wouldn't want to leave this because it looks like a mistake, even though it's not. So what you would want to do is essentially um, brighten up the area behind it or darken our shoulder here. So just as an example, when you're compositing, look out for these, 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 uh, I, I, I would guess, uh, happenstance sort of uh, things that can happen. Um, so if I plug this into a radial and then uh, let me just close all this stuff and sort of go here with a radial and just sort of do a slight gamma up. 
you know, and you just like a very slight gamma. So maybe there's a street light that kind of lights up those buildings a little bit or something like that. We can give it a reason. We can try to justify it from something nearby, but you see the difference. We have this, which really feels disconnected. And then we have this, which suddenly uh, makes it look much more real. And these are the little things that you need to look out for. These kind of edges, uh, these value conflicts, I call them. So and then you would basically, uh, you know, if you had a moving camera, you would track this in or, or whatever. Uh, so that's something that we, we want to think about as we're going to go through this as well. So let's just play through, see if there's anything else that's really obvious. Something else we can do in this composite is we can add a fake rope as well. So we're going to add something that he's kind of swinging on. Um, but I think the biggest ones really, if we let's, we'll, we'll start with getting the black uh, point in, in a good place. So it might not mean just completely crushing him down. You know, for example, we could, you know, we could do something like this, but it also might mean that you, sometimes you want to meet halfway. Sometimes you don't always just want to push one towards the other. Sometimes you want to push the background maybe a little bit, uh, you know, higher in gamma or something like that. Maybe not in this case, but um, you know, potentially that is another solution. So for example, we remember that there was a big flare uh, on this character and that's why it's much brighter up here. Um, we could actually simulate if we put a radial and we put a big radial spot here. We could actually simulate uh, sort of a flare, maybe not using the gamma, we could use a little bit of a lift. Maybe a little bit of a lift here, maybe a little bit of a gamma up and maybe if you you know you could do a little bit of a slight gain gain would not be the right thing to use there but you see if we start to simulate that um it actually starts to feel like it belongs together and that's another way of doing it so you say well why would i want to do this and you definitely could be maybe he's swinging away from a helicopter and the helicopter is lighting up the atmosphere behind him so in this case you wouldn't want to just crush everything and make these blacks go to this black you would probably bring up a little bit of um, atmosphere. You could even take in some noise and you could you could stencil it in. So you kind of break up that shape a little bit. You could take a noise, another noise pattern and do the same thing. So let's just take another noise and copy the same uh, grade. And then you could take a roto and kind of mask it in there. I'm just showing different examples of how you can integrate this picture. Um, that doesn't just go for the straight obvious uh, result. So if we go in here and we add a little bit of really basic clouds, uh, this character is going to feel integrated a little bit better and we didn't even touch the plate. So sometimes that's something, it depends what show you're working on. If you're working professionally, sometimes they don't want you to, to adjust the plate as much. So something you could do is kind of adjust that background a little bit in subtle ways to make those black levels sit together. And you can justify them using smoke or you can use uh, different types of color corrections. So that's one way to do it. Usually what I like to do is uh, push, push it both ways. So if you can, um, adjust it both ways. And sometimes not the whole image needs to be pushed. Um, so sometimes we could just push the shoulder to, to be in the contrast of what's behind. So that would be a value conflict. We want to push them together closer. And, but not necessarily, not necessarily in different places. You know, this is, there's still a little bit too lifted here, but it's less uh, conflicting than, you know, somewhere like this. So we would do a roto shape here and blend and get, try to get those closer. So that's what we're going to talk about. And that's a quick overview of integration and looking at a background, a foreground, and just starting to think about edges and what looks right and, so yeah, I think that's a good start. Uh, I've done a little, bit of, a little bit of color correction on the background here. It was just a saturation and a hue correct to take some of the colors out of the background. So that's already in your comp. Um, if you wanna start from scratch, you definitely could. Just like disable them uh, and just try to get them closer to the tones of our guy. So basically I just desaturated it and a little bit of a hue correct to take some of the pinks out. So just get rid of the pinks so we don't have a that type of image and yeah so just a quick just a quick test we'll probably do it in the next lesson or next two lessons I just want to see 
you know, what is the range? Could, what could we do with this water here, for example? Maybe we could bring some light into it and make it less of a black hole in your image. If you kind of abstract this image for a moment, um, rather than looking at this as a picture, but if you just blur your eyes almost, if we just blur this picture and we ignore all the details, we just look at the picture, we have a big bright thing and we have a really big dark thing, but then we have a, a, a bright circle against a dark circle. So this is a, a way you can test if your image is kind of working as well. Read the edges and see, you know, are the places that have the most contrast, the, the, the bright and dark, is that where you want to be looking? And in this case, it's not exactly where I want to be telling a story. And so in my opinion, this is artistic opinion, um, you know, you might want to go in here and do something to, you know, just kind of brighten this whole area. So we can bring in some light from here and then maybe, you know, a little bit like that. Maybe that's a bit too much, but I think you get the ideas like, uh, you know, we can play around with where your eye is taking you and that's going to be a different type of effect. Now I wouldn't maybe do it this much. Maybe I would kind of, you know, feather it off and do different things. I'm probably going too far for this video, specific video, but you know, I'll go with it anyways, because you guys can see my process. I think that's what's most valuable probably for my classes is seeing somebody actually go through the thought process uh, with not, you know, no planned intention. So I'm not, I don't have this planned out or anything. I'm just kind of thinking and playing around. And that's kind of the uh, the creative process rather than just, you know, um, keying and everything that we were teaching or learning. Um, this is probably the hardest part of compositing and, and the most creative. And I think the most fun part is trying to figure out, you know, how can we tell a story and how can we create an interesting image? So this is kind of different. And then what you could do is some color corrections and stuff on the end. So you see what at the end is where we will add our color corrections. So once we have them, once we get these guys close together, the background foreground, we'll go at the end and do some, some grades overall. So right now they're not matching and, and we'll do that. So I'll delete what I just did and hopefully that's a good explanation for you guys in terms of the way I'm thinking. And uh, I'll, I'll go into it more as we, as we start from scratch here. So hopefully that was kind of useful. Um, just some sketching ideas, hopefully some interesting content to watch. Uh, and to give some context on that, uh, this is kind of the shot uh, the, that is one of the projects in, in the class. Uh, the class has multiple projects, so this is just one of them. And uh, that's just one tiny aspect of kind of what's covered there. So uh, if we kind of compare like something with no integration, um, you know, it's kind of flat and, you know, nothing kind of blends together. And, you know, when we do some color integration and go through all those various tiny techniques, um, it's really a, like a million tiny little changes that kind of make something. And it's hard to tell on something when you're just wiping like that. Uh, it just looks like a little, a simple multiply or grade, but actually um, experienced compositors know that uh, usually to get a shot to that, uh, those higher levels, it takes a little bit more work than uh, a single grade. So that's kind of uh, what it is. And yeah, that's about it.